Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing a solo playthrough of Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is currently on Kickstarter. What you see before you is a prototype, all rules, components, stuff, subject to change. I have a review you can check out as well. Uh, this over here, we're going to be going through this. I'm going to link down below to the Kickstarter. This is the board game adaptation of the video game. This is from, from Contention Games, bringing you Slay the Spire to your tabletop in a way that you can play it solo, competitively, not competitively, I lied, solo, cooperatively, all those things. This right now is a solo playthrough. Maybe I'll have a cooperative playthrough, but no guarantees in that one. Maybe before the campaign ends, a lot depends on that, I don't know. But either way, this is me diving into it solo. A few things worth noting, again, rules, components, subject to change, they're gonna have metal coins, things like that. We're gonna have some some other stuff over here. In the physical prototype over here, I only have Act 1. Uh, this will have, well, this does have more acts currently on TTS and all this stuff. I have played through more than, than Act 1. I've played through the whole thing multiple times. But this right now, today, we're just doing a single playthrough through Act 1. To that end, we're gonna start us off by determining which boss we're fighting. We're going to go ahead and roll the die over here. We got a 4, which fortunately enough is the actual one we're on at the moment. So we're going to be fighting against this boss over here, putting it down on our path. These tokens are set up over here. Uh, they're randomized. Some degree of randomization, some degree of preset pathways. Different token backs define which spots they go on. So you have a degree of randomization, but also a degree of control over how this map is set up. Again, we're currently going through Act 1. We're playing as the Silent right now. So this is the Silent over here. We're going to have our player mat over here. We have our little board with our 3 energy around. Zero block. I'm currently playing on a slightly altered ascension mode. Basically, there are different ascension modes in play, but again, the prototype is limited in what I have. So I just decided to give myself the two potion limit, which is one of the ascension modes, as well as limiting my health by two, which technically wouldn't happen yet, but I can't I can't balance around some of the other ascension stuff. So slightly harder gameplay over here. Not a, a lot of things, a lot of the elements of the game that you could have potentially unlocked at this point, I wouldn't necessarily have done so. So just, just trying to give myself a bit of an experience here. So, let's go ahead and dive into it. If you don't know already, Slay the Spire is a deck building game. It's a deck building game where you go through a bunch of iterative adventures, starting off down here, making your way up until eventually defeat the boss. Doing that across three acts, defeating the boss three times, or defeating three different bosses, getting progressively harder as the enemies level up and get harder as you go through it. Throughout the course of the game, you're going to be building out your deck, hence the deck building game. Between combats, you shuffle up your entire deck again, and that should be enough to get you started. We do have the other players over here we have the ironclad the defect over here and the watcher all in play again if you want more information on my opinion of the game you can check out my review i'll link to that down below this is me just just playing through it because slay the spire so let's dive into it starting off with our well our first encounter our first encounter is going to have let's go ahead and draw the enemy that we have put out oh, no i lied you gotta start off properly by drawing let's randomize this over here Let's shuffle these up. These are going to be, one of these is going to be our starting uh, our starting situation. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. Nyao is going to give us Nyao's Blessing. Nyao's Blessing gives us three money, which will take three money over here. Three money, as well as a card reward, which we'll go ahead and do. When you take a card reward, generally you draw from your default deck of cards, which I'll show you in a second. But then other times you'll have opportunities to draw from your special cards. But we're going to draw from our regular cards over here. And we have the following card rewards. We have Cloak and Dagger, which will give us, I love, I love shivs and defense. Over here we have two attacks, two defense, you may switch rows with another player. That's not going to help me as much in a solo game. So I think I'm kind of inclined to go with Cloak and Dagger. Getting some shivs in play, we're going to toss that on top of our deck. Getting rid of these two, we'll shuffle our deck before the encounter. Then we have the rest of Niao's Blessing, which gives us an option. We can remove a card, we can gain $4, or we can add two random card rewards to your deck and lose two health. I don't love random cards. I'd rather card agency and control. So I'm actually going to choose to remove a card off the bat from my deck. So because we just got something that had a little bit more block, I think I'm going to actually remove a defend card from my deck. We'll put that off to the side. And that is our starting setup. Again, we'll shuffle before combat. Let's start by looking at what enemy we're fighting yet. And we're fighting over here on this top row here. These slots are for multiple players. If you're playing with multiple players, I'm just playing solo right now, which means we're fighting a cultist, which also means we need to go into the deck over here and pull out a green louse. We have a red louse over there. We need a green louse somewhere here. Green louse because of the, the summons deck. You always draw a single card, and it tells you which cards come along with it. And then we're going to see what we happen over, we have happen over here. We're going to start by shuffling up our deck now. We're going to, every round of combat begins with you rolling a die to see what effects might be affected by the die. Sometimes if there are no die effects in play, I might skip that. Right now we do have a die effect in play, so we're not going to skip that. So... We're going to go ahead and do so. We're going to roll the die. We're going to draw five cards and start the deck building process. We're fighting against the, the Cultist and the Green Louse. The Cultist is going to be strengthening every turn, like you'd expect from the game. We have to put two health markers on them. And then we have the Green Louse, which is variable. Right now, it's dealing a, a weaken over there. Plus, it has Curl Up. The first time it takes damage, it gets two Shield. Shield only lasts to the end of the round, so we're not worried about that right now. If we have any Shivs, we don't. Are we taking an attack? We're taking one attack this round. So a single defend would negate the attack. 
But the question is, do I want to do that or do I want to neutralize? Honestly, neutralize is better. Neutralize will, will negate the attack anyway. So let's go ahead and play neutralize over here. Neutralize is going to deal one damage to the cultist while putting a weakened token on him. The next time he deals a damage, he's going to deal one damage less and remove the token. That costs me zero energy. I have three energy, zero block, and seven health. We're then going to go ahead and hit a curl up on the green louse just to uh, effectively, I, honestly, no, it's immediately going to get two shield right now, so I can't take it out right now more. But that triggers its curl up, and now it's got two shield till the end of the round. Then we're going to play a strike and a strike, and they're doing two more damage, one, two, against uh, that character over there. Now, I should kind of revise my turn, because I forgot. Start of, tur start of combat, I draw two extra cards, which might affect things. It does not. So that's my turn over there. We got that. Our three energy is expended. I do not always move my energy down as I go. It's the situational. But right now, as far as just in terms of tracking, but right now, the uh, cultist is going to go ahead and get a strengthen token, which means he's going to deal additional damage with every attack next turn, but he's going to deal zero damage because he's weakened. So it's one minus one is zero. And this guy's going to go ahead and weaken me, which means the next time I deal damage, I'm going to deal one less damage and then remove the two shield. And that's his turn. We're going to go ahead and draw five more cards and continue the process. So we got five more cards, a handful of, we got to roll the die over here. Let's roll the die. We got a four, which means he's doing one damage to me. Now the good news is I have a whole lot of blocks set up over here, which means I'm kind of fine as far as not dying. We're going to go ahead and do the first block, which will generate a uh, we'll generate a shiv as well. So we're going to generate a shiv with that. We're going to go ahead and then potentially, I don't care about any of these cards, we're just going to go ahead and generate two more block, which should be enough to generate all the defense we need. Unfortunately, it doesn't kill everyone. This is a delaying turn. Delaying turns aren't great when we're dealing with the cultists because the cultists get stronger every round. So right now, another turn, we're going to go ahead. I spent my energy. I got my block up to three. The cultist is going to go ahead and deal two damage to me because of the fact that he has a strengthen token. And then he's going to strengthen again for next round. We're dealing three damage, and the green louse is going to deal one damage because of that four. That's a total of three damage, and I currently go down to zero block. That's my turn. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up my cards and proceed to the next round. We got this. We got this. It's taking longer than usual, but we got this. Four, first combat. We have one, two, three, four, five cards. We have our three money over there, which is unrelated to anything happening here, and we have our cloak and dagger. So we're going to go ahead and just outright kill. Ooh, I don't love it. I don't love it. Let's see what we can do over here. I may not be able to kill things. We should roll the die. Let's see what we're getting. We're doing a two. So he's doing two damage that I don't love. So I do want to take him out. They are getting stronger and more annoying. We're going to Cloak and Dagger, spending one energy and getting one of those and one Shiv. We're going to deal a strike to the Green Louse using one more energy, which unfortunately, because of my Weaken, will deal nothing to him. But then we'll go ahead and spend both my Daggers, which can be spent at any point to go ahead and count as an attack. So it's going to take out the Green Louse before he can deal two damage to us. That takes him out of play. We still have one more one more, and I'm a little mindful and nervous about how much damage I'm going to take over here. We're going to go ahead and try to prevent as much damage as possible, popping up one more. That's going to be our turn. Our energy is down to zero, and that's our situation. End of turn. This guy's going to go ahead, and he's going to deal three damage to us. We're taking way too long dealing with him. I have two defense, which means I will only take one damage, which is good-ish. The problem is now he gets another strengthened token, and now he's doing four damage. It's we got to take him out. we got to take him out. One, two, three, four, five. My shivs are gone. We're going to remove those from play. We're going to see what we got over here. We got, okay, so that's not bad. So we have, let's go ahead and do Survivor, which will do two defense. I have to discard a card. I'll discard a, one of those. That gives me two shield over there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and deal two damage to him with our other two energy. And that will hopefully take him down to a manageable amount, down to four. Maybe next turn I can kill him, but I honestly, I don't think so. I don't think so. This is not good. This is a very bad first round for the record. He's going to go ahead and deal four damage to me, less my two block, meaning I'm going to go ahead and reduce my block to zero and take two damage. This is horrifically bad. We're going to go ahead and draw our cards. He's going to get another strength and token. And if I don't take him out this round, um, we got problems. We got problems. So let's go ahead and see. I think I have to. No, it's too late. It is what it is. Fine. We're going to go ahead and draw our cards. We have these two over here. The neutralize will definitely help us. That's going to help a lot. But let's go ahead and shuffle our cards and see what else we draw because that's really going to define just how badly we do or don't do as we go through this. So we're going to go ahead and draw three more cards. One, two, three. Not the best at all. We're going to go ahead and neutralize him, which will deal a damage and cost me zero over there and weaken him, which means I have a chance of actually surviving because now he's only doing four damage again, which is uh, manageable, I guess. And then we're going to spend our three energy to go ahead and do survivor, discard a card. That's going to be one. And then two more of these. And that's a total of four block against his four damage, uh, so we're actually fine on survivability this round. 
but he is going to get another strength in. But the good news is we're probably drawing into a hand of enough strikes at this point to actually take him out. So it, everything is fine. Ish. He got another strength in. He got his neutralized, weakens his damage. That balances out. And now we're going to draw five cards. Play it, pray unto everyone you care about that we have at least three damage in this hand. So we have a cloak and dagger, which is going to be a damage over there. We have a strike. And we have a strike over there. That's going to be our three damage. We'll expend our shiv. And that is a kill. Took way too long, and I lost four health, three health, to a starting character, which is not the best, but at least we took him out. This is the point where we're going to get our card rewards. We're going to go ahead and get one gold. This is going to be the reward we get over there. That's going to be a single gold, and three cards, which we'll take over here, and we'll put them off to the side. And we have our three cards to add to our deck. We have Terror, which gives Vulnerable and Exhaust, which is okay, but not the best. We have Sneaky Strike, which is three, but if you discard this, this if you discard a card this turn, you get two mana back. And then we have Dagger Spray, which is not bad, but I kind of like Sneaky Strike, although it is very situational to discards. But I'm going to start building towards a discard deck and see what happens over there. And that is our first encounter. You've just seen encounter number one. We're going to go ahead and move up the pathway. And this is where we have to try to choose where we want to go, because I like the idea of Going this pathway will get me to the merchant, and it might be the only way to get the merchant. I do want you to see the merchant, so we're going to go up the center pathway, and we're going to have a random encounter. So, encounter number two, we have the lab. You find some potions. Each player gains a potion. Roll the die once for the party. On a four, five, or six, one player gains another potion. So, let's go ahead and see. We do not. We get a regular potion. That's it. And we have fire potion, where I can deal four damage. We're going to toss it over here with my potions. That's our lab encounter. And now we're going to continue our adventure to our regular other enemy. We have these over here. And we have a sneaky gremlin. Summon three random gremlins. This is going to involve us going to our random gremlin pile over here. Random gremlin pile comes out. And we're going to go ahead and put out random gremlin. We have three random gremlins. This is obnoxious. We have three random gremlins. I don't even know if we have the board space to properly manage this. We do, just barely. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put down. Now, the good news is these are easily killable. Uh, that card I had, that would have dealt damage to everyone. So one of the cards I just, I just did not choose, unfortunately, is the Dagger Spray. That small means it would have done two damage to everyone in the row. Everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Like, that's a lot of everyone's. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up our deck and see how we're doing over here. Our block is down to zero. Our health does not heal unless we do something to heal. That is the nature of Slay the Spire over here. you gotta got to actually work it. This is not good. This is not good. Start of combat, we do draw two extra cards. That is helpful-ish. We'll see. Okay, we can go ahead and draw our five, six, seven cards and see how our start of combat goes for us. We have Sneaky Strike, which is not helpful yet. We have a, we don't even have the discard. We don't even have the discard. Okay, let's see what we can do. We have a Neutralize, which could be good for someone that's staying alive. We have a Strike. We can take down. We can take down one of these people. So we're going to Strike and and Strike over here. That's going to be two hits. Okay. And that's going to be one, two energy down to one. And we're going to take out this guy. Okay, so that guy's dead off the bat. He's done. We don't have to worry about him. We still have a bunch more people attacking us, unfortunately. And we have another one over there. Uh, defend could be good, but defend's not going to help us over here. If we neutralize someone, we're going to deal, they'll deal one less damage. So we could go ahead and neutralize. We're going to spend this for zero to neutralize this guy over here. So he's going to deal one less damage. He's going to be weakened, which is not going to help us stay alive, unfortunately. But it is what it is. And I'm going to spend a defend to go down to over here. And, um, and that will be that. We'll get one defense out of it. And things are not going the best. Things are still not going the best. Things were going-ish fine. Uh, enemies are going to attack us. He's going to deal one damage and remove the neutralize, which will lower down over here. Actually, we technically we lower our block to zero. Then we have one damage from over here and one damage from over here, as well as a weaken. Uh, this whole playing on less health thingy seemed like a really good idea at the time. Now, less so. One, two, three, four, five cards. We're going to reset our energy. Uh, blocks down to zero. We are definitely dying soon. And let's go ahead and see what we can do over here. Now, we do have a fire potion. We do know that. We can use the fire potion. But let's see who we can take out along the way. So if we take out, if we could take out the gremlin over here, our first damage. Oh my gosh, our first damage. Okay, let's go ahead and strike this guy, which is going to reduce that to zero, so he's not going to die even. That's going to be our first problem, because we have the weaken over there. Our, our damage options past that are just not the best over here. Uh, we could go ahead and cloak and dagger. We could discard a card. Uh, we could strike this guy to kill this guy, which will be our second energy expended. That's going to take him out of play, which is not bad at all. I don't mind taking him out of play. And now we have these two people. Well, actually, we need his card for the um, reward over there, so we'll take that. But we still have one energy left. 
We have one energy left, and we can either get a shiv and ho hopefully hurt someone, or we can just survive both damage. I think we're going to go with surviving both damage. We can't afford more. So I'm going to survive her, discarding that card into two defense, last energy gone, and we have two defense up on my track, at which point they're going to go ahead and attack, and they're going to do zero damage, but they are going to go ahead and weaken me again, so we're still dealing with that problem. Our energy is going to reset over here. Our block goes down to zero. We're going to shuffle up our cards. We have two health left. We're doing brilliantly over here. Brilliant. The Mad Gremlin is the one you kind of want to take down in one shot because the Mad Gremlin is going to power up as you damage him. So that's the one I'm a little worried about. But let's figure it out. You only live once, right? Actually, if you've played Slay the Spire, you live a lot of times. So let's see what we got over here. We have Strike, Strike, Neutralize, Sneaky Strike, still not helping us with the Sneaky Strike. I think the Neutralize is going to be important, but the first thing is going to double strike this guy down to zero. That's the most important part. It's going to cost us two. It's going to take him out of play entirely and stop him from weakening me. Also, I kind of cheated there. I'd have to have played Cloak and Dagger as well in order to get a Shiv in play because the first strike would be negated by the Weaken. Then I'll cast the Shiv at him. Cast, cast the Shiv. Put that in play. Deal with that. And that's going to be dead over there. And this way I have to make a decision of whether I want to start the process of attacking, because I still have Neutralize over here. Neutralize is not bad. This guy's dead over here. I can take him out. The problem I have is the Neutralize would potentially negate him now, but it would leave me potentially vulnerable to actually dealing much next turn. I think I'm going to go ahead and Neutralize him. That's going to weaken over there, as well as doing a damage. So he is going to take, uh, he's going to power up, but the weaken will cancel out the power up, at least for next turn. That cost me zero, and we're done. Uh, now he's going to go ahead and deal his two damage to me, which becomes one, which becomes zero because of my block, and we reset this to three, and we walk into next turn, drawing five more cards. So this is why I kind of want to take him out right away, because that mad gremlin, if I can't take him out right away, it's going to be, it's going to be a problem for us. Uh, the weaken is gone, the strengthen is not. We have one. We have two. I can deal two damage to him. Now he's currently going to deal three damage to us. So right now he's dealing two damage to us. If I attack him once, he'll deal three damage to us. So I am going to strike him, which means he's now doing three damage to us because of that. Uh, that's going to cost me one. But then I'll go ahead and do Survivor on my other strike to discard it for two shield and defense. And that's going to be my thing. So I'm able to take all the damage. Right now we're in pure mitigation mode. He's dealing three damage to us. We have three shield. We're going to go ahead and reset down to zero. And now he's going to go into the next turn where we're going to again draw our cards. Now you can see over here how I've been totally not rolling a die every turn. In theory, you're supposed to. In practice, it doesn't matter. And also, I have a fire potion, which is totally going to be thrown at that guy's face if I think I'm actually dying. So let's see how that plays out. Okay. We have our draw over here. We're going to draw two cards. We're going to reset our energy to three and just hope that we have three strikes. That would be enough to do it. So three strikes over here. We have one, two. We don't have three strikes. We don't have three strikes. This is not good. I could neutralize him, which will both power. No, he's dealing three damage to me. He's dealing three damage to me. I think I just have to... I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a burn turn. So I'm going to play defense, 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 and just get three defense. And then that's going to be my turn. His attack is going to deal, well, nothing, because I have three defense to his three attack, and we're just not going to antagonize him yet. We're going to draw into the next hand, reset down to zero again. Hopefully we have three attacks now. When we finally do, we're going to sneaky strike, and that's going to cost us two, and we're going to deal three damage to him, and he's done. And yes, I had a discard option, but I didn't need to use it. He's done. He's gone. Mad Gremlin is gone, and the card rewards here are going to be one potion. Let's go ahead and draw a potion. We have a... Distilled Chaos. Play the top three cards of your deck without losing energy. Treat X energy costs as your current energy. Ooh, that could be fun. That could be fun. We also have a money, which we'll use for our merchant when we get there soon enough. And then finally, we have a card play, which is always what you have as far as those go. So, card play. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the cards. We have one, two, three. Acrobatics, Finisher, and Riddle with Holes. Riddle with Holes. Holy hell. Finisher. Deal one for each other attack you play this turn, including Shivs. I think I want the Riddle with Holes. Honestly, they're both cool, but Riddle of Holes gives us four damage, uh, controllable to when we want to, which is the big deal right there. So we're going to put these off to the side. We're going to get rid of these cards. And that is where we are up to, up to which means then up to the next encounter. Encounter three. Making good progress. Going to shuffle this deck up because the next encounter is going to be another little encounter over here. We're going to draw another basic enemy, put into play. And we have a large slime. Now, the large slime on death is going to split into the acid slime and spike slime. Okay, at the start of the next turn. Now we do have to roll a die every turn, so let's see how this plays out. I'm going to draw my seven cards for the start. Set my energy to three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's see what we got as far as, well, rolling a die. We got a five. A five means it's going to be dealing two damage and two, oh my gosh, two over here. Oh, that's not, two ethereal over here. That's not good over here. That means it's going to be blocking us. 
Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. We want Riddle with Holes. We do love that. He's doing damage to us, so I can neutralize him, which is going to deal with damage, and weaken one of the damages. That's not bad at all. And I think the shivs are a good thing to get at this point. Oh, we're going to cloak and dagger into a shiv. That's going to be our second, our first energy spent. So we're going to grab a shiv, and we should have more shivs. Where, where are my shivs? Where are my shivs? Do I only have four shivs? I thought I had five. I do have five. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and generate a shield, which is going to mean he's going to do no damage to us. And then we're going to play Riddle with Holes so that we have four shivs. And then we're just going to go ahead and spend one, two, three, four five directly at his face and he's gonna die that's it that's the round that was a that was a fairly fast encounter as far as things went sometimes you have those depends on the cards that come out the good news is we now walk away we do draw a potion which means we'll have to waste a potion but let's go and see what we got we have split potion draw three cards i think i'm going to discard swift potion because you only hold two potions right now because we're playing on that ascension mode augmented ascension mode we're going to get rid of the large slime we're going to draw another money to continue our money collection over there. And then we're going to draw a card and let's see what we got. So we're going to draw three cards. We got one, two, and three. Infinite Blades. I love Infinite Blades. I love it. It's my favorite thing over here. Whew. Infinite Blades. We're drawing Infinite Blades. One of my favorite cards in the game. This is going to give me a blade at the start of each turn. Power cards are a little different. They they don't really go... They go into your deck, but then when you play them, they're gone right away. Like They, 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 they have their effect throughout the rest of the combat. We're going to draw that, and we're going to walk our way into an Elite Combat, which is probably a huge mistake, but hey, I live for mistakes. Okay, Elite Combat. Are we doing time? We're doing okay in time. We have to do a cut at some point. You won't notice the cut. I'll just switch to the top camera. It's all good. Let's go ahead and do this. We're, we're still doing horribly on health for the record. But we're going to walk into an elite combat over a regular combat. Why? Because I'm silly. That's why. We're going to draw an Act 1 elite enemy over here. Put it over there. And now we have our elite enemy board, which you get to see for the first time. Which is this guy, because we don't have 17 marks. That's going to be based on player counts. 17, 33, 48, and 64. And the 17's over here. We're going to go ahead and put a tracker marker, tracker cube, on this board. Which is going to be, that guy is going to gain Enraged at the end of the first round. So I really hope I draw my Infinite Blades at the first round. Because after that, whenever I play a skill, it's going to take, make me take a damage. And guess how much damage I can afford to take when I have 2 health. If you guessed very little, your answer is not wrong. Not wrong at all. So, it might be time to play a potion. We're going to play a potion here. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Let's go ahead and see. Let's move this gap a bit so we can actually see everything. And we're going to go ahead and play our seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we did not get what we wanted. So, we're going to start with our Distilled Chaos. Play the top three cards of the deck without losing energy. Treat X energy costs as your current energy. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Distilled Chaos is gone. And we're going to play the top three cards of my deck. One is strike. We're going to strike this guy down for one. Okay. Two is going to be defend. We're going to get one defend off the bat. And then three is going to be strike. Where's my infinite blaze? Not cool. Not cool. So at least we are striking the guy, which is helpful, but not as helpful as you might think. The block is not helpful either. We are going to go ahead and grab riddle with holes because that's going to give us five shivs over there. One, two, three, four. So four shivs, I should say. That's four shivs. So riddle with holes got played. We're not going to bother with defense because right now he's not attacking us this round. Uh, we could do Neutralize, which is one damage, but I think I'd rather... Well, we could still do Neutralize, because why not? And that will also weaken him next time. So we're going to Neutralize him and deal damage to him, which is good. That's going to cost us zero. And then we're going to go ahead and we have... Lastly, we have a Strike or a Shiv. I think I may as well do Cloak and Dagger. No reason not to. Get that one more Shiv. We can always toss it at him when we want. Great. That's our card play. At his turn, he's going to do Gain Enraged. Now when we play skills, we're taking damage. So now it's damage all the way down, or hopefully as, as best we can. We'll see. That did not work out the way I thought it would, honestly. Um, we might be in trouble. We might lose. Let's find out. So, let's go ahead and... We really might lose. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. We got Defend, Defend. The problem with skills is they negate any benefit. They negate any benefit. We're probably going to lose right now. Okay. When you play a skill, take two damage. Your infinite blaze is a power, so it's not a it's not a factor. So we're gonna go ahead and just play all our infinite blade, all our blades at him, dealing five damage. Five damage is gonna be directly to his head, going on to four to uh, nine over there. So he's down to nine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play sneaky strike for two, and then strike for one. That's gonna be a total of four damage to him, which is not gonna be enough to kill him. Nine down to five, and then we're going to go ahead and um, I think that's all we can do. That brings us down to zero. And then we could do four more damage to him, which sadly is not enough, because four more damage is going to bring him down to one. Okay. Oh, it might be enough. It might. It's not enough. It's not enough. Brings him down to one. Okay. And then from there, um, 
from there, I don't believe there's anything we can do because right about now he's going to deal two damage to us, which is exactly how much health we have. And we have this kindling, but we can only use it at a campfire, which means we went ahead and, and died. Yeah, that was hard mode. Um, cool beans. Well, let's go ahead and set up again because this is so short. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and set this up again and dive straight into another match. So you get to see me play two games of Slay the Spire at once. I'm going to go ahead and uh, snap my fingers and have myself set up as... Who do we play as now? Do we want to play as... I never liked The Watcher. Not in the... Not like even in the regular video game. I, the Watcher is never my, my jam. I, I always found the defect to be fun, but not as fun as just straight up playing as the Ironclad. Ironclad works for me. They're simpler, but it's not my issue. My issue is just they're good. I could do the... Do I want to channel? Maybe you'll see how channeling works. You know what? We'll go ahead and play as the defect. I'm not as optimistic as playing as the defect. I, I find, I've always found it to be more struggle to play as I, the whole cycling of the orbs, but it is fun to watch how it goes. So we're going to go ahead and set up as the defect and see if we can start another playthrough and, and see how this one goes. I'll see you in a second. And we're back, playing as a defect this time. All set up and ready to go. We got our map a little more randomized. We're going to choose our boss right now. We got a five, which is a different boss than the one we never fought the last time. So we now have this guy over here instead. We're going to pop that guy in there. Everything else is the same, except I haven't changed my miniature. But we'll go ahead and move forward with that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So we got over here, we can get rid of these shivs. We're not going to be using the shivs in this game because the defect does not use the shivs. Instead, the defect channels orbs. Now, if you're familiar with Slay the Spire, you'll know that the defect has this whole channeling orb thing where you have these rotating orbs. The location of the orbs does not matter in this one. Again, this is the balance trying to make everything into a board game while keeping as many elements as possible. We instead can have three orbs over here and we can go ahead and start a combat. We're always going to channel a single lightning over there. So to channel lightning and the orbs operate a bit differently, but we'll talk about that as we go through it. Same basic stuff. We're going to go ahead and start with a Nyao card and see what we get over here. We have gain $3, which I believe is standard, as is gain a card over here. And choose an option, add a random rare card to your deck. Ooh, definitely doing that. We're going to add a random rare card to my deck over there. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to grab a random rare card. And we're going to take a look and see what it is. And it is... We got multicast, invoke an orb X times. That's fun, All right, cool. So we can invoke an orb X times. That could be a fun, fun little card to be utilized over there. We're gonna go ahead and select our card that we're choosing from our card reward. We have claw, scrape, and cold snap. So I think channeling frost is definitely helpful here because if we're gonna be invoking orbs a lot. That's gonna be helpful. Claw is plus one damage if the topmost card and discard pile costs zero. And scrape is plus one if the topmost card, return it to your hand. So a lot of cards in the, the uh, defect do rely on zero cost things. And I am certainly intrigued by that. I'm certainly intrigued by leaning into the, hmm. I'm intrigued by leaning into the zero cost element. But I think I'm going to start with Cold Snap. I think having a, another Frost in play, giving us block every turn, I just think it's too strong. We're going to go ahead and shuffle this into our deck and start with our first encounter, which hopefully will not be as long as our, our last first encounter. So we got a two for one over here. You get to see two, two game plays for the price of one, two different characters, both solo still. But let's go ahead and see how this plays out. We're going to choose our Act 1 card over here, seeing what we got. And we have the Sneaky Gremlin. Is that the same? No, it's not the same. It's not the same. That was not our first encounter last time. It's a different first encounter. Still the Sneaky Gremlin. So we're going to have four cards over there. Let's see what we got. Do we have our Wild Crazy one? Oh, Gremlin Wizard, that's not going to be fun at all, though you do get to see how that works. I don't think I properly explained that last time, but let's go ahead and show you how that works. We got some two-cost guys over there. We're going to move that there. We have a bunch of twos and a four. So we have a four, a two, a two, and he's going to be charging up. The way that works is whenever you have a track like this, and the, you're going to start with the cube on top, and then you're going to go through the track, but you only repeat the reds. In other words, that first one's kind of a delay tactic, and then from there it's going to repeat in the red every single turn, which is, well, as you can imagine, not good. So we start the round by channeling one lightning, which we do. Uh, channel lightning will deal two damage when evoked. We'll talk about that. And one damage when it just exists at the end of the round. So let's go ahead and see what our starting hand is. We got defend, dual cast, cold snap, zap, and defend. We've got a bunch of money going on here, a bunch of opportunities here. We could get our initial defense in as well as kill a person off the bat, which is not bad. We can kill two people off the bat. Honestly, I think we're going to do Cold Snap and Zap. I think that's not the craziest. So we're going to spend our three mana over there to get Cold Snap and Zap. We're going to put a, a little Cold Snap, a Frost into play, as well as a Lightning into play. Then we're going to deal two damage to one of these guys. We're just going to go ahead and take out one on the back here because this guy's nice and uh, take him out off the bat. And we're going to go ahead and 
we're going to deal that guy dead. So he's dead over here. We're still going to take damage from him. Let's go ahead and see how this plays out. Next thing we're going to do is our lightning. At the end of the round, we're going to generate a block from our frost and two damage from our lightning. We're going to go ahead and kill that sneaky gremlin. We need him for the reward. And that's our first turn. Okay. So we're taking those out. This guy's going to move over here. This guy's going to deal a damage to us, which can be blocked by our shield. But he is going to weaken us. And that's the next round, moving into it. But we are starting off the next round, fortunately, with a two immediate damage and a block. So honestly, if we can take out the Gremlin Wizard, we're fine. I don't even care about the uh, Fat Gremlin as much. But the Gremlin Wizard is not simple. So there is that. Let's go ahead and see what we got. We got Defend, Multicast, Defend, Strike, and Strike. So the interesting thing is, Weak, I believe, only applies to actual uh, damage. Meaning, I think Weak does not apply to to the rest add a token when player enemy with att attacks each sword in the attack enemy action deals negative one yeah it doesn't deal it only matters for a sword based attack which none of these are so it would matter for strike but it would not matter for our orbs which is interesting because we can go ahead and invoke an orb x times so watch this we're going to spend three mana to evoke one of our lightning bolts three times and when you evoke a lightning it does two damage and since we're evoking it three times we're going to go ahead and deal six damage taking these both out and negating the de the the little modifier i have over there because that doesn't apply to that and so that should be a win against the gremlin wizards so we're done with the gremlins a lot faster than last time which means we can now go ahead and take our combat reward getting a money getting a potion and getting a card reward potion is going to be gain a strength which does not help me not great for this character but Let's go ahead and get a card reward and see what we got. We have Golden Ticket. Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. Golden Ticket, Loop, or Force Field. So when you reveal a Golden Ticket, instead we're going to reveal a rare card from our deck, which these rare cards are indeed rare, especially in Act 1. So that's actually pretty, pretty interesting. Orb, end of turn effects get plus 1. That's really interesting. Okay, that's a strong one, but it's also expensive. It takes up an entire turn. Versus end of turn Loop, trigger an Orb's end of turn ability. Do we get one plus one across all our orbs? Or force field, three costs one less for each power you have in play. I think I'm going to take defragment because I don't want to miss it. But like I'm a little worried that that's the wrong choice. Playing a three cost card in act one is just hard. Until you have those things that give you additional mana coming in. Energy, not mana. Until you have that stuff going on. I just feel like not having that would be a mistake that I'd regret later. I just, it's expensive though. It's expensive. Three cost card when you only have three energy is tough. Either way, let's see what we can do with this. So, we move to the next encounter on this chart, which I did randomize again. We have a randomize. Let's see which way we want to go, actually, before we just do it ambiently. Let's, we want to go, I like, we have a merchant over here, we have a merchant over here. If I go to this merchant, I can get those two people. So I think I want to go down a pathway that gets us this way, maybe. Do I want a rest pathway? We can rest over here. So if I go on a rest down pathway up there, we're going to go down in the middle. Okay. We're going to see what we have for Act 1, and we have one Ancient Temple. You come across an Ancient Temple. You sure you don't see any traps? Gain a, 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 a Relic. Lose 1 HP. Lose additional HP for each player who chose this option before you. So we're going to gain Sundial, which on a 2, we gain 2 energy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's very helpful. Sundial could be very useful, and we do get, lose a health, though, for it. So there is that downside over there. But let's see what we got past that. So we got that over there, and then... We're going to go ahead and choose our encounter. Moving further up the track over here, we're going to go ahead and have a regular encounter. And we're going to grab this and put down a Fungi Beast over here. Now, Fungi Beast comes into play with another Fungi Beast, so we need to grab one of the matching encounters over here. See what we got. We got another Fungi Beast over somewhere here. There we go. Here we go. I'm going to put that into play. And we'll go ahead and start our hand, where we're going to start and channel one lightning, which we already did. We're going to roll a die. It applies to all effects. Be a two. It's not a two. It's a six, which means this fungi beast is strengthening. That fungi beast is doing two damage, and our ability here does not matter at all. That's not going to be fun. Not going to be fun. We could go ahead and channel a frost. I like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and I think we're going to deal two damage to this guy. So he's going to go down to four. This guy's going to be a five. Uh, that's because he's strengthening, which I don't love. And then he's going to go ahead and... He's going to Cold Snap and Channel of Frost. So we're getting a Frost. That's good. We still have one energy left, which we could use to defend. But we are taking two damage. I can negate the damage down to nothing by defending. I'll negate the damage down to nothing by defending. So that's our energy spent. Our turn is done. End of turn, we're going to deal a damage and generate a block because of our orbs. And then we're going to go ahead and take... This guy's going to power up. And this one is going to deal two damage to us, which will hit our block, and we are good to go there. And now we move on to the next round. Next round, we're going to go ahead and draw some cards, reset our energy, and draw five cards. So, we're going to roll the die. Let's see what we got over here. 
and we got a four. So this one's going to be strengthening. That one's going to be damaging and strengthening. So we really need to take that guy out. He needs three damage. We can evoke an orb twice to do it. We can channel a lightning. You know what? Honestly, I'm kind of inclined to do that. I don't want to invoke my orb's light. We're going to channel a lightning, popping a lightning to play. That'll be able to do two damage. And we'll do this over here. This is from the last round. And that means it's going to be a damage over there to that guy. Um, that's one there. And we still have one thing we can do left. I could go ahead and evoke an orb twice. That would not be good. That would give me block. I think we're just going to go ahead and toss a block in play. Not that it matters, honestly. But that's going to be that. So we're done over there. That means he's going to go ahead and take two damage from this. So he is now dead. So his strength won't matter. And then this one over here, on death, though, he's going to make me vulnerable, which is not great. So that means next time I take damage, I'm going to take twice the damage. And this guy's going to strengthen. So um, basically, if he deals this, he's going to be dealing six damage to me in one shot. Because three, but then doubled, and that would be problematic. So let's hope he does not roll that, or that if he does, we can take it out. We're going to go ahead and draw more cards. We have three cards and a shuffle. Uh, again, we took no damage, so we're totally good on damage that round. If we get a nice evoke twice... If we get an evoke twice, we're golden, because we just need to do five damage. So a single evoke twice would be enough. So pray to the card gods, because I don't want to die again. Just to be clear, if we do die again, it's over. We're not making our way to the Act 1 boss. We're just dying again. So let's see what happens when we draw our cards. We roll our die, and we have a two, which means we have the energy we need to go ahead and do multicast and evoke an orb five times. So we're going to deal 10 damage to this guy, just destroying him. That's the, the round. So the, the card gods answered our wishes over there. We get our card rewards, which is going to be a potion. Let's go ahead and grab a potion here. We have our potion, a liquid memory. Return a card you discard pile to your hand. It costs zero energy. Oh, that is nice. That is very helpful for this, uh, well, not for the multicast, for the other one. Uh, but our fungi beast is going to also give us a coin, which we'll grab. And then lastly, of course, a card reward. So we have three cards that will come out. We are cool-headed. We have Melter, and we have Steam Barrier. Steam Barrier is 1, plus 1 of the top most card of Discard Pile is also 0. That's not bad. Cool Head lets us channel a Frost, and I do like the channeling process in general. Do I want to go more channeling or more Steam Barrier for the cost aspect? I think I'm going to go Steam Barrier. I think I'm going to start leaning in. We already have some degree of, of card play in terms of uh, channeling Frost and different things, and Lightning and stuff, and we start with that. So I am, I'm feeling a little confident that I want to start leaning into the 0 cost strategy now. We're going to take our, our ores out of play. We're going to lower our that. And we're going to get rid of the fungi beasts, putting them off to the side in our little pile of dead things, and then move to the campfire where you get to see a campfire action. When you go to a campfire, you can effectively either you can heal. I can also use my kindling because I'm playing solo to heal an additional two. That's once per act. But you can also upgrade a card, which is what I think I want to do. Upgrading cards is something you haven't actually seen yet over here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I want to see how much defragment is. So this is where there's actually, in the final game, there should be a booklet telling you this. But right now I can take a look. That's a big deal. I think that getting a defragment to play at a cost of two is much more likely for me to get into play. The only other thing I would debate is the uh, evoking one, the multicast. And the multicast, I'm guessing it does invoke an orb X plus one. There you go, you see? I didn't even know that, but you can get a feel. One of the nice things is, once you play the game, you can get a feel for what an upgrade is without even having to look at it. And so we got our, our defragment, though. That's going to be helpful. Having a two-cost defragment really helps us a lot, plus the sundial giving us that extra two energy. I think we're, we're, we're having a fun time. We're having a fun time. Moving on to the next location, we're going to go ahead and go this way, and we're going to remove our that, because we're not vulnerable anymore. And we're going to have... The Cultist! The Cultist is back! Let's go grab our Green Louse. I believe he's at the top of our deck, if I'm not mistaken. Green Louse over here. So, we have our characters in play. This is the first encounter we had last time. So the encounters are random. They do power up between acts, but in an act, they don't get more stronger or less stronger. They're just kind of there. We're going to go ahead and draw our five cards. We're channeling our one lightning, and we're taking a, a gander at this. We're going to roll our die. We have a five. That's going to be relevant for that Green Louse. is going to be uh, affecting us. Okay. We could multicast off the top to go ahead and deal just six damage, which is interesting. It's an interesting strategy to take out the cultist early on. Or we can try to get a cold snap and channel a frost into play, which is also not the craziest thing. I think we're going to cold snap, dealing two damage to him, and channeling a frost so we can start getting our defense up. And then we're going to go ahead and deal a strike, I believe. We're going to strike him, dealing one damage to him, and that's going to be our three energy spent. And that's our hand. That's going to go down there. And then at the end of the turn, they're going to deal one damage to us, which is negated by our block that's channeled. Or at the end of my turn, I deal damage to them. Um, I'm, going to go and do, I'm going to deal it to the louse so he can curl up and deal his shields right now, which means they're immediately going to go away shortly. Uh, let's curl up. The first time he takes damage, gets plus two shields. Then this is the guy is going to go ahead and weaken us for the next attack. He's going to strengthen. His attack is negated against us. And these shields come off. 
And we go to the next round where I reset my energy to five, to three, not five, that'd be cheating. And roll a die, hoping for a two. Give me a two, give me a two, give me a two. We got a four, a four. So he's going to be doing one damage to us unless we kill him. So let's go ahead and see what we got. We got defragment. Orb effects get plus one until end of turn. That still is solid. I think we're going to... Uh, orb end of turn effects get plus one. I think we're going to play defragment. That's going to cost us all but one. Which means I definitely don't want to dual cast. And I don't want to bother striking because I need more defense right now. Although right now he's doing two and three. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and defend. It's going to pump us up to one. And that's all our mana spent. To that end, we're going to go to end of turn effects. He's going to deal two damage. And he's going to deal one for a total collective of three. But because I first watched deal two damage again. So I'm going to deal two damage to this guy. Pumping it down to one, two, like so. And then I'm going to get two defense because of defense, my frost. Then all that defense is going to go down to zero as they deal their three damage to us. And that is basically the round. We're going to put these onto play. But I'm feeling pretty confident because we have the doubled up. That's the fragment. Such a, such a good card. We're going to shuffle up. We're going to roll a die. Give me a second to see what we got. I, I feel I feel good about this one. We are currently weakened, but as long as we don't use actual strike cards, it doesn't really matter. Upgrading that card is a big deal. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Don't worry. That's where you usually get smacked in the head in this game. So we're going to go ahead and roll the die. Get a two. Get a two. It's not a two. We're going to be dealing one damage with that guy. So what do we got over here? Um, I can go ahead and do that zero. I can gain a shield just from that. Steam Barrier is going to be a shield. Gain one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and then channel a lightning. That's definitely something we want to do because our lightning deals four damage a turn right now, which means we can immediately take him out and block that. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and get rid of our weaken, which is going to cost us one over there. So down to one, weaken goes away. Don't actually have any effect. And then we'll generate a shield because why not? That's our hand. We're going to go down to zero on the energy and we're going to then immediately kill him because four damage, he's dead. And then we're going to put him off to the side over here. And then we're going to generate two shield because of our, you know, our, our card over there. Which means he'll deal one damage against our shield. Our shield will go down to zero. Our energy go up. And then we go into the next round where we can roll a die and see what else we got. What else we got? So, we got this over here. We're going to roll a die. And we got a two. So now we have five energy. Look at that. Five energy. He's going to be doing two damage, but I'm not particularly worried. Because I'm just going to go ahead and invoke an orb twice to deal four damage to him. Boom. That is the round. That is the situation. We're going to go ahead and get our one money and three card draws. So let's go ahead and put our cards off to the side. Okay. We're feeling pretty confident. Pretty confident. We need one money. We need our three card draws. And we're going to put this guy gone. Okay. Three card draws. So we have compile, compile driver, we have recycle, and we have darkness. Ooh, darkness is fun. So darkness lets you deal three, darkness when you evoke darkness. It only does things when evoked, but when you do evoke it, you deal three damage plus one for each power you have in play. Or we can recycle to exhaust a card and gain money equal to its cost. I'm not averse to that, but I think recycle won't actually help you that much in a single round. It helps you for longer boss fights, possibly. I think I'd almost rather, rather channel a dark. I think we're gonna grab darkness. Okay, although Compile Drive is not bad either, but it's not as helpful this second. So we'll just draw Darkness over there, getting that into play. Both of them are good. I, I am tempted by the Recycle. I think it's good for boss fights, but who knows if we'll make it that far, and I'd rather you, uh, I'd rather you think that I'm doing well until that point. So let's go ahead and see what we're doing over here on this pathway. We're going to continue to a random encounter there and see what we got. Living Wall. Living Wall. Three faces materialize from walls and speak. Forget what you know and I'll let you go. I require change to see a new space. If you want to pass me, then you must grow. So we can remove a card from a deck, we can upgrade a card, or we can transform a card. Honestly, I'm kind of not feeling the strikes in my deck. I feel those are not that helpful, so I'm going to go ahead and do a forget to remove a strike from my deck and uh, start the process of weeding my deck outwards to get better, a better, a better card consistency for whatever we need. Because getting rid of cards can help. I don't know I'm shuffling yet. We're not to the next encounter. We're going to go to the next encounter. We're going to grab a little trinket. Grab a little chest token. See what we got. We got the boot. And we are three or four. We deal one damage. That's not bad. We're going to go have a little elite battle. This time we'll see if we actually survive this time. Because last time we died. And we're currently going to be dealing against the Lava Gulen. The Lava Gulen over here is going to be our next elite battle. And we got to put our counter into play. We got to put a counter into play. And see what we got there. We need to put a 22. 22 is his health over here for a single player game. And let's see how much damage we can do to this guy. And his tracker is going to do nothing to us the first round of combat. So let's shuffle up. Let's see what die we roll. A 2 is best. A 3 or 4 is good. So we're getting a bunch of dice, good dice results. 3, 4, 5. Draw, draw, draw. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and put our energy to 3 and roll a die. 
We got a six. None of those things are helpful. We have the following. Defragment. Ooh, that's good to get out nice and early. We're going to pop that out nice and early. Uh, we don't. We can channel Lightning 2. That's beautiful. That's beautiful first turn while he's doing nothing on his first turn. So, for example, again, he's going to do nothing his first turn, and then he's going to keep cycling the next three actions the way that works out. So, because we have two Lightning in play, and because our or end of turn effects are plus one, we're going to go ahead and deal four damage to him, bringing him down to 18 already. He's going to move down here, and that means next turn he's going to try to hurt us. Uh, the, the Defragment stays in play. The other cards, I may have shuffled it in last turn. I don't know if I did. But the other guys, the problem we have now is that he's going to deal 4 damage to us, which isn't great because we can't take 4 damage. We're actually pretty weak once you uh, get past our fun little ability to hurt people. So we're going to roll a die, see what we got. We got a 2. So we do have 5 energy, which is nice. If we could evoke an orb 5 times, that'd be great. So we can go ahead and channel... Okay, we can channel a darkness. That's going to cost us 1. We can evoke the darkness twice. We can put the darkness in play. We can... Hmm... We can evoke the darkness twice over here. That's going to be this over here, going down to three. So the darkness is going to be four damage a pop because it's four damage three. It's three for deal three damage plus one for each power card we have in play. We have a power here. So it's four damage and we're evoking it twice. That's eight damage, bringing him down to zero. So that's a nice solid combo there. We still have more stuff we can do. We can do cold snap to go ahead and pay two to put a frost in play, which will give us two defense and deal two damage to him, bringing him down to eight. The problem is we're still going to take damage, but it's not the end of the world. And then we're going to do our last energy to do a simple one damage to him. That's going to be that over there. And then at the end of turn, we're going to deal two, two block for ourselves and four damage, bringing him down to three. So we're definitely doing better, but then he's still going to do four negated by two, which means he's dealing two damage to us. That was definitely significantly better than our last elite combat, although we're not out of the woods just yet. Um, we're going to go ahead and shuffle this up, see what we got. See what we got over here. We just need one more card draw, and then we're going to roll a die. Uh, we should be fine. I, I mean, honestly, we're going to be fine. It's, we, we're dealing four damage at the end of our turn. We're guaranteed to be fine. So we're going to roll a die, and then I'm going to play this over here, evoke an orb twice, and deal four damage, and kill the guy. That's it. That's the that's that guy dead. We had a better, better opportunity this time. We're going to take two money. So we're going to see two money because of his reward. We're going to get one relic, which are always my favorite part of the game. Dolly's Mirror, on a 6, trigger another die relic. Its owner gains the effect. Ooh. So that means on a 6 or a 2, we can go ahead and get 2 mana. And then also gaining a card reward, which is always the best part. We're going to see what we got. Let's move this out of play. And then let's move this guy out of play. And then we have, we have Sunder. 5 damage if this kills the enemy. Gain 3. That's cool, but not good for boss fights, which is where I really want it the most. Streamline. 3, but costs 1 less for each power card. I don't have a lot. And we have Compile Driver. 1, and draw a card for each type of orb you have. The problem is I can't really pay for those cards. So honestly, Sunder, despite being not the best, might still be the best. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Sunder. It's not, not what I want, honestly. But sometimes with the card draws, now you could skip taking a card entirely. If you don't want to hurt your deck, you can skip it entirely. But I think something's not that bad. I just think it's situationally good. And situationally good is not the worst for right now. So we're going to go ahead and continue our encounter. We're going to have a merchant board encounter. So let's show you a merchant board. Merchant board counter is going to work as follows. We're going to grab the merchant board. We're walking along the merchant spot. We're going to start spending our money. So we're going to put a merchant board in play. We're going to put down relics. They all cost the cost shown, but this one costs one less. Okay, so we have the relics over here. We have the potions in play, which will cost, again, the cost shown. And then you could buy cards and weed cards as well. So we're going to put cards down in here. We also have a card removal service where you can pay three on each remover card once per player. We are going to reveal three cards from our regular deck, and they cost two, three, or six, depending on the rarity. Okay, so that's what we have over here. And that is what we got as far as our marketplace. Now we have a total of one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight money to spend. Uh, Omamori, you can't gain curses, would be very cool, but we're not playing a longer game. We're only playing Act 1, so it's less useful. The Abacus is once per room, you can add one to the die result. And it's, I, I think it's optional. I assume it's optional, otherwise it's just random. So it's optional, but it costs eight, which we could do, but it can guarantee a lot more flexibility on both of these, being able to have some really powerful turns. I might actually go that route. Energy potions are temporary, and we have a limit of two anyway, so I don't care about that. Um, I think I am kind of inclined. These cards don't really help us. Leaf doesn't help us. Doom and Gloom is not bad because it lets us channel more dark, but it's still costly, and I don't know if it helps us much. I'm kind of inclined to take the Abacus so we can have some really strong, powerful turns. That's going to cost us 8, which is all our money. Every last cent of we, what we own is going to go towards buying the Abacus, but I think it works for my current set of relics as is. So we're going to put this down here. 
And that means we now have the ability to basically make things what we want them to be a whole lot. Basically, four of the dice results will give us plus two energy, which is just really, really strong as far as, well, the marketplace goes. So, that's a marketplace encounter. We're going to continue on along a path to have a... Ooh, we could do a branching marketplace, but I don't want that. That's not going to help us. We're going to do a randomized encounter over here. Random act one encounter. We have big fish. I didn't split before you. Which do you choose? Each player chooses a different option. I can heal two health points, which is not bad. I can upgrade a strike, which I don't care about. I can do the box where I gain a, a what's it called, and gain a curse. Or I could do restraint and remove a strike. I'm kind of inclined to do restraint and remove a strike, but I think I'm actually going to have self-control and just gain two HP to hopefully survive. So one of the big changes from this game versus the, um, the, 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 the digital game is everything's kind of scaled down. Instead of having 100 health, you have 10 health. Instead of doing 10 damage, you deal 1 damage. It's all scaled down, but that means 2 health is, two health is a lot. We're going to go ahead and move to the elite fight over here and see what elite guy we got. We got the last guy we died to, so it's come up this time. We're going to have our 17 health over here, 17, and this time we're totally going to kill him because this time we're a whole lot stronger. We have our channel this, we have our energy to three, we have our die ready for all our relics that are just super awesome. We go and shuffle up our deck and start the process. We're about to have an actual boss encounter. So you're about to see how boss one plays out in a second. Act one, you're going to see that shortly. Let's go ahead and figure this out. One, two, three, four, five cards. I'm excited. I think we might, we might actually take on the boss. I don't think I've actually done that. Have I done it with him in this? I apologize, I played so much digital to this buyer and so much regular to this buyer, I don't even know anymore. But... We have our strike, we have a dual cast, we have a multicast, a steam barrier, lots of options. The multicast is not bad, but the first thing we need to do is we need to roll a die, and we rolled a six, which can immediately trigger the two to gain two more, so we're going to go ahead and get a five energy turn. So this is where you get to the part where it's going to be a little obnoxious, because I think I'm just going to try to like take him down. I think I'm going to, if I pay five energy, I can just evoke that orb down to zero and deal a chunk of damage to him. We need a tracker on him. Which, especially considering he doesn't like skills, that might not be a bad time to just take him down directly to 7. It's tough. I think it's the right time, though. I'm going to multicast for 5, and I'm going to just evoke this orb 5 times, dealing 10 damage to him, bringing him down to 7. I feel a little weird doing that. It's not the... It's, like, a little early to just, like, evoke my orbs. Usually, I'm trying to, like, build things up, but it's the right move, I think. And now he gains Enraged, which means now when I play skills, I'm going to take damage, which that's the part I don't like. That's where he's... A bit of a jerk face about those because I rely on skills primarily to survive here. So we're going to go ahead and roll a die. What do we got? We got a five. A five could become a six, which then could become anything with our sundial. So that's not bad. It's not bad at all. But we have to make decisions over here. We can channel a dark. <sighs> we can channel a dark. We have cold snap. I'm a little worried now. So he doesn't like skills. He's going to make us take damage from skills. I could do Sunder, which is not the worst, honestly. Sunder is not the worst. Neither is Cold Snap. So we can do the following. We're going to do Cold Snap. Actually, it's pretty, I think it's over. We're going to do Cold Snap to deal 2 damage to him. That's going to cost us 2. And then we're going to do Sunder, which deals 5 damage to him, which costs us 3, technically. goes into 0. It deals 5 damage to him, but then gets us back 3. But he's dead. So, um, yeah. That's what Powered Up looks like in this game. That's the fun part. You power up like a boss, which is important because we're about to take on the boss. We're going to get two money, which isn't going to help us because we're not actually playing in Counter 2 right now. We're going to get a card reward and a relic. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at relic. Peace Pipe. When you rest, you may also remove a card. Ooh. Well, that's that makes resting a whole lot more compelling. I wasn't planning on resting, but maybe I will. But let's first take a look at my card reward and see what we got. We got Beam Cell, Hologram, and Go for the Eyes. Go for the Eyes as a zero-cost card does feed a little bit into my strategy, but not extensively. Hologram has put a card from your discard pile into your hand and exhaust it. That can be powerful for, like, an end-game strike. I don't mind Hologram. I don't mind Hologram. And Beam Cell is not bad either, but I think I prefer Hologram. Hologram can really... Although Beam Cell can be good if you would do a Voke. Let's read the... Um, let's take a look at the card. I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. See, when you have this card over here... Evoke an orb X times. So I'm pretty sure it only... I'm pretty sure each instant counts on its own. So I don't think that's going to help. So we're going to grab Hologram. We're going to grab that one. We're going to put these out of play. We're going to grab this guy because he's definitely dead. Definitely so, so, so dead. And then we're going to go ahead and deal with the boss we're fighting, which I don't even know what it is, but I mean, I do. It shows on the back. But first, we're going to rest. So when we rest, we're going to move forward to the rest spot. And I could rest to gain one, which is helpful because I can then remove a card from my deck. Or I can try to upgrade a card. The multicast is an Evoken Orb X plus 1. That's not that strong. I think I'm going to go ahead and rest to gain 7. And then remove a card from my deck, removing a strike. So I think I'm going to do that. 
because I want to get rid of my strikes in my deck. And then we're going to go ahead and flip this guy, and we're going to be fighting against the slime boss. The slime boss is over here. He's going to have 20 health, which is actually not that high, but again, playing solo. But some of the bosses here can get pretty high as far as their health. We can have like 100 plus. And then we're going to have a little tracker. He's going to be trying to clog my deck extensively with those, which is um, not fun. So, but Slime Boss when killed is at the start of your next turn. Summon a Large Slime, Acid Slime, and Spike Slime. Oh, that's why he's not that much health, because he's going to keep summoning other other things, which is yay. Okay, anyways, did I kill a Slime? I think I killed a Slime earlier in this playthrough or last playthrough, and then didn't spawn his summons when I did. So I've been cheating somewhere. Anyways, let's go ahead and go through this. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to start by evoking channeling. Channeling a single lightning on our board here. Energy set to three. We have seven health. We're doing what we can. And let's see what we got. So we're going to channel a lightning and a dark. That's usually a good start offhand. So we're going to channel a dark. We're going to channel a lightning. That gives us something to evoke later. And then, oh, we didn't roll a die. We should roll a die. On a four, we can make the four. The four is just that. We can't make it into anything else. So we're going to make it a uh, deal of one damage to the enemy. So he's down to 19 now. Okay. And then we have one more that we can do, which is going to be a strike, because that's all we can do that helps. And that's what we have as far as our turn. On his turn, he's going to go ahead and put three of these into our discard pile. They're going to clog our hand. We have to pay an energy to exhaust them, which doesn't hurt us now, but it will hurt us later. But in the meantime, he's going to deal three more damage and then do it twice more, clogging our pile even further, Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Oh, end of turn. I forgot to do it. End of turn. Deal two damage for my lightning. That's my turn. We're going to start this over here. We got a six. I'm going to get two energy over there, going up to five, because I can. Let's see what we got. We got Cold Snap. We got Sunder. We have Steam Barrier. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, interesting. I actually have to double check how this works. I don't know if Steam Barrier gives us plus one off of the um, this thing over here, because I don't know if it costs zero, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it does, because I think it's cool. So we're going to pay for the Steam Barrier zero, zero, get two block offhand, which should already mostly negate his block. We're going to channel a Frost. That's going to be two damage to him. One, two, but we're also going to evoke this when we do so. Whenever you are run out of slots, you evoke one, which is going to deal another three damage to him. One, two, three. Uh, that's going to be that over there. That's going to cost us two. One, two. Then we're going to deal five damage to it, I think. We're good on Frost. Yep, we're going to deal five damage. Going down to three it does not kill him, but it does bring him down to six over there. And now he's down to that. Okay, so none of that. That's our turn. He's going to go ahead and deal three damage to us. Well, first we're going to put a shield up and two damage to him. One, two. And then he's going to deal three damage to us. One, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and um, draw five more cards. Next round. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to roll the die. We got a two, which means two more energy. So we're just going to continue that cycle of pain. And I could multicast, but I don't think I need to at this point, honestly. I'd rather just take them out slowly. So we're going to do Defragment. We're going to get plus and one end of turn effects. Uh, that's going to cost us two. He's going to go down to do six to us, by the way. So we should make sure that we kill him this turn. Can I kill him? I can evoke an orb twice. Interesting. If I can evoke an orb twice, then I can deal four damage to him. So I'm going to dual cast to evoke this orb twice, dealing four damage, bringing you down to... Oh, you're at four. You're down to zero. So you're zero. That's done. Um, and I think I'm not going to bother playing any other cards. We're going to let those go away. And then we're going to put into play whatever cards he wants, which is these Large Slime, Acid Slime, and Spike Slime. Large Slime, Acid Slime, and Spike Slime. There we go. So we've got three slimes in play as a result of his death. So he does die. We'll get, talk about his rewards soon so you can see what that plays out with. But we do have these three in play as far as end of turn uh, baddies who decided to join us. So we have a five, nine, and five with not tracker cubes, but rolling dice. So it's up to next turn now. We're going to draw a hand of five cards. We're going to roll some dice. Let's shuffle up my deck because everything is gone there. And let's see what happens. So I'm doing pretty well. So far dealing with max damage, which is great. Uh, one of the higher ascension levels does not have you healing yourself after each act. Instead, you heal two instead of fully healing, which is a big deal because usually one of the things you rely on in boss fights is the fact that you can actually go down two lower degrees of health. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay. So we need to roll a die first for them and for us. We got a six, which means they're all doing one and that, one and that. Um, we have lots of weakening happening, which won't hurt me as much. My six does enable me to get two energy, which I'll grab. And now we see what we got. We can multicast. We can zap. We can... We got some things. We're going to go ahead and start with Sunder. We're going to pay three. And then we're going to immediately kill this guy, because I can. And that's going to immediately give me back the three, which is a beautiful use of the card, which I thought would not be helpful in boss fights. I was wrong. We're going to uh, channel a lightning with that. So that's going to bring a lightning into play, which don't forget, they're dealing an extra one, uh, which I shuffle that into here. Unfortunately, we're doing an extra one. We'll just remember that. It's not a problem. 
Then I can evoke an orb twice if I want. I can strike now while the iron is hot. That's not funny. I'm going to go ahead and deal damage to that one. And then I can multicast to take this guy out. So I'm going to multicast paying four. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, let's go ahead and pay uh, three to multicast this over here, which is going to do, basically I'm going to multicast this three times. So that's going to be six damage going from U to eight down to two. That's gone. And that is what I have as far as our, our abilities over there. Now the upside is at the end of the turn, this is going to deal two damage because our end of turn effects are improved. So you're going to go down to zero. And then you are going to go ahead and, um, I think I misread that actually, I lied. I put him at nine, he was at 12. So if I use a nine, he should be at three right now. So I, I caught that, 10 and 12, sorry about that. But I will go ahead and get two defense over here, which is not relevant because they're going to deal three because on six right now, we're dealing three of these, which would matter more if I was going for a strike strategy, but I'm not. So that does not matter for me at all. We're gonna go ahead and shuffle up. One, two, three, four, five, and see what we got. We're gonna go ahead and roll a die. Here we go. We got a three, which will be one damage. I'll just go ahead and deal it to this one over here. So you got a damage, and three, don't forget, affects these as well. So three damage and two damage is what they're gonna be doing. And we have these cards in play. Now, I do have these over here, but they're gonna clog my hand continuously, that's okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to be taking damage, and they're dealing a lot of damage right now. So I'm going to do, uh, we're going to do steam barrier, steam barrier. That's going to be three defense, going to bring me from zero to three. These are going to be gone. That was all three of my. I, okay, I could go ahead and pay to get rid of one of these, so I will do so. That's going to be one of these gone. The others are fine. We're down to zero. These go into my discard pile, and that means we're going to go ahead and use our doing two damage to kill this guy. So he's gone now. And this guy is going to, I'm going to get two defense from my orb, which means his two damage to me is negated. So we can ignore that. Which means we go into the next round. We're going to roll a die and see what we get for next round. And we have a four, which will deal a damage to him with this. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we have as far as our cards. I'm feeling pretty confident over here. I think we should have got this. We should have this, not should have got this. Let's see what we got. We have Defragment, which is the one that's already in place, strictly speaking. So let's not grab that. And then we have the following. We actually don't have a lot of things over here that are fun. We're going to channel a dark. So we're going to pop a dark into play. That'll bring us down to two. Uh, he's currently doing four, which means he's doing two damage to us. So we're just going to do our best to just ignore that. We will uh, we could strike him, but it's a waste of time. So we'll just go ahead and pop these two down and go up one, two, one, two defense. And that should be enough to keep us alive because then we're going to pop him for two damage with this over here. So he's going to go down to there. And then we're going to go ahead and generate two shield against his two attack which brings it down to two, which means we'll reset to next round, where I think we can safely say we got this, because at this point, no matter what I draw, we're going to go ahead and evoke that, have end of turn two damage from that lightning, which will kill him. And that is basically, let's just do it, let's just do it, let's just do it. One, two, three. I'm not going to roll the die, though, okay, I'm going to skip that part. But we're going to go ahead and play this over here, we're going to ignore all this stuff, and we're just going to rely the end of turn effect, and that's going to kill him, and he is now dead. Which brings us to the boss conclusion. Boss conclusion is you get the following. We're going to get three money, uh, that's my board. This is only relevant if you're going to the next act, which we are not, by the way. You're going to go ahead and get three uh, rare card rewards. So we're going to go look at three rare cards and take a look at what we got as far as the rare cards. So we have Hyper Beam. We have Meteor Strike. Ten costs one less for each power you have in play. I don't have a lot of power, so that's not that great. We have five. Remove all of our orbs, but deals five to everyone. That's pretty interesting, but I like my orbs. And we have two and put all zero cost cards from your discard pile into your hand. I find that intriguing. It doesn't actually play into what I'm doing right now, but it could if I continue to build my deck, which again, is act one. That's not going to happen, but let's pretend it is. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the final thing, which is the boss relic. The boss relics, if you've played Slay the Spire, you know this. These are the these things and they're very very fun let's take a look at what we got and we got the following we have black blood end of combat heal 2 hp that is good that is good for someone who doesn't heal otherwise we have coffee dripper that sounds like me start of turn gain a thingy at campfires you can't rest i will take coffee dripper or we have at the campfires heal three when you enter the room so eternal feather just heals your campfires regardless of what you actually choose to do at campfires Honestly, right now, usually I go for energy all the way. With this particular build, I actually feel I have my energy. With all my relics going on, I have my energy at high right now. So I think I'm just going to go with Black Blood. Uh, end of combat, heal two health points. I think that will really help me stay alive. Uh, but that is where we get to see the scenario and adventure end because there is no Act 2 in the physical prototype. There is on TTS and Tabletop Simulator. They have all the, the, the stuff and things. But for right now, in this, I, I, I win.
I win. I lost the first one, but I won the second one. Uh, that is the the the, the defect. Uh, the other characters I've played with all for all four characters so far, and um, yeah, you check out my review for more information on how I feel about the game. This is me just playing through the game, and I'll have a link down below to the Kickstarter so you can check that out. Thanks for sticking around with me for the last hour or so uh, through a loss and a subsequent uh, win. And until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.